So what was that, Courtney? Uh, <laughs> and we could, the Irish can spell as well. Nick's a... Nick's Nick uh, Viv says Nick is hot. <laughs> yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we we're able to, to, to laugh and have fun in, in your name as well. It's uh, yeah, it's awesome to be part of your church, Lord, and, and what you've got in store for us. So this morning we ask that you bless Nick as he brings the word. Would we be open to to hear what you have to say this morning? And also, Heavenly Father, that you just take the the tithes and offerings and use it for your multiplication of your church, Lord, and your will for us as a church this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for the guys that looked after things while we were away. And I see we kind of a little bit more different. It's a... it's almost like when you go for those eye tests and you've got to kind of get the peripheral view. So I've got to kind of... <laughs> uh, the uh, Calvin on my left here is a bit worrying. But, um, <laughs> but it's, really, it's really great to be back. And Tracy, it's good to have you back as well. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, just for the privilege, Lord, to be able to sit here, Lord, and, uh, and open heaven, a God that loves us, a God that smiles upon us, a God that is for us, a God that does everything to set us up, a God that set us up for victory, that blows wind into our sails, Lord, and we, we just, Father, I just thank we come with grateful hearts, Lord, and thank you that your leading edge, Lord, is is grace and mercy and compassion and forgiveness, Lord. And in you, there's, with you, Lord, there's there's steadfast love and plentiful redemption, Lord. That, Father, when we come here, Lord, we don't have to perform, but we come as your sons and daughters, Lord. And, And we thank you for that, Father, that for each one of us, Lord, that you've got great things planned, Lord, that you've an inheritance, Lord, both here and in heaven one day, Lord. And thank you that you've chosen us, Lord. You put your grace upon us, Lord. You gifted us, and you're calling us forward, Lord. Thank you for just the way that you speak over us, Lord, and you encourage us and strengthen us and um, and call us for, and call us forth, Father. You truly are an amazing God. And Father, no matter where we find ourselves, Lord, your word tells us, Lord, that we are blessed. And Lord, this morning we, we count our blessings, Lord, and um, yeah, each one, Lord. Even though we might be in a tight spot or whatever, Lord, we know, Lord, that you work all things for the good of those that love you, Lord. We know, Lord, that you are building our faith, Father, that we might come forth shining, Lord. And I pray for each one of us sitting here, Lord, that, yeah, Father, the star that you've called us to be, Lord, that together, Lord, that you'd place us and that we, Father, somehow, in the bigger scheme of things, Lord, would be a sign of you and point people towards you. Even as the the wise men, Lord, they went to you at the birth, I pray, Father, that our lives, Lord, would point people to, to you in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for your word, your word which does not return to your void, Lord. Thank you for the words that have gone into people's lives sitting here, Lord, the prophetic word that you've spoken, Father. And Father, even though some of those might be dormant, Lord, we we trust, Lord, that word what you speak, Lord, is powerful, and it will accomplish that which you sent it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your spirit. And Father, we open up our hearts now, Lord, and may we be a people, Lord, that wants more of you. 
as you pour yourself out in this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Great. We've been, we've been speaking about fighting for our inheritance or contending for our inheritance, not talking about salvation because that's not we don't have to fight for that that is it's a gift of god but it's what we it's what we do with our salvation and how we work our salvation out and um i think it affects both um our inheritance here on earth but also our rewards one day that we'll have in in heaven the way that we live our lives yeah does actually matter sometimes we think well you know just jesus you know i mean he goes to the cross saves us, and then we, we carry on living as we are. And I think if we build our lives like that, the, the, the Scripture does tell us that um, we will be like those escaping through the flames. We'll be saved, but we'll, we'll arrive there kind of burnt and sm- smelling or smoke. And yeah, we'll be in heaven. But uh, there's, so much, there's so much more. Um, so yeah, I've been given the, the topic this morning of just things that can hijack us. So I don't want to get kind of um, into the negative, but actually to call us, to call us uh, uh, higher. And the time away, to me, it was just such a confirmation, going to Johannesburg, and man, God, God speaks. Just came, the, the, the call over there is, is God just calling us to more. Uh, it was confirmed in every way. It's that we're not to, that we to remain pioneers. We're not to settle. God has called us to be settlers. Um, but to, to remain pioneers, taking, taking ground, going to uh, seeing new people, new places, uh, new pleasure of God, new pleasures of God. God wants to give us new, new pleasures. But um, just walking in more of the pleasure of God, that God enjoying us as a people and, and what, what, we, what we're on about. But we need to be on about God's thing, not, not our, our thing. It's not a, not a, time, to, it's not a time to settle. Um, but it's a time to, to rise up and to, to move into the more that, that God has got. And it was a message that came through time and time again. I w- came home, walked out, the, walked out the front door, and Eric had been in the garden. He had taken one of the ground covers. And it was quite a nice plant when I left, and he had kind of pulled it apart. Um, but next to that, there was a whole lot of barren or, or uh, landed as fellow, and he had taken it and planted it all over the place. And it just kind of, as I walked out, it was the first thing I saw. And it just kind of witnessed to me just where we come from, that God wants us, he doesn't want uh, us to be just this big lush bush. Uh, and actually, what God has called us to do, to, we, we must remain healthy, um, but we've got to multiply. And we've got to cover the, we've got to cover the ground, and we're going to do that by planting churches, and, um, and sometimes when you do that, it's not going to make us actually look, look bigger and stronger, and that it's actually going to make us weaker, because we're going to give of our best. Um, but there's a bigger picture out there, there's a kingdom, and we need to, we need to dial into, the, into that thing, and it's, it's, it's on God's heart. God's heart is apostolic, He wants us to remain. We need to be a pioneering people, not to build the biggest and best church in, in Neisner. You know, we want... Not, not that we're against numbers. Uh, we want to grow. We want to see this hall full. And uh, I trust we will one day. But it's more than that. It's about raising up people, sending them out, planting churches, and um, speeding up the day when Jesus comes back. Uh, Tyron actually preached the one, the one message was on uh, Isaiah 6. And all these messages can be found uh, on the on the internet, we'll give you the address, and yeah, I'd encourage each one of us just go and take them, listen to them, maybe even in the life groups. Um, it's just part of our bigger um, our bigger family, and 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 defines a lot of what who we are and where we're going. Um, yeah, and just just as he was preaching on that Isaiah, just where the the Jesus the the robe of his the train of his robe fills the temple. It just kind of spoke to me. It's, it's about people. It's actually his, the, the, that robe that filled the temple is about the people, and the, his glory is in the people, in the church. It's us sitting here. Isn't that awesome? But we call to, to, to go out, and we, we need to, the seats to the left and right of us, they need to be full of people. It's, that's his robe. And uh, another thing that Tyrone actually said there as well that struck me was that 
Um, the robes that we've been given to wear, the best, the best way that we can glorify Jesus is actually put on our robes. Um, walk in the washed robes, that, the, the, the robes that He's purchased for us. Walk in it like sons and daughters. We're not, we're not sinners anymore, we're saints. And we need to put on those garments and we need to rise up in strength and, and, um, and move forward. And so the church, the people out there can see the glory of the church outside there. We know where we are and uh, where we come from, where we're going. Uh, Psalm 84, 5 to 6, it says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Others, other um, versions say whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Uh, as they pass through the valley of the Bac- valley of Baca, which is a valley of tears, they make it a place of springs. The early, the early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Um, and this passage is just that thing of uh, the, the, the highways in our hearts to Zion. It's a, it's a picture of the kingdom. If you, if you remember Abraham, Abraham set his heart on the city whose architect and builder is, is God. He wasn't living, he had a tent and an altar, and that's how he traveled through this world. But he was looking towards, towards God and the kingdom that is, that is coming. And that needs to be our focus. We need to be a people that is a, a pilgrim people. Not said on what's going on in the world. You know, we, 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 in the world, we go through tough times and uh, all of that. But we need to have our eyes set on, set on the kingdom and this, the city that is coming. Um, but as we pass through, the places that we pass through, the places of weeping, we make it a place of springs. That's what God has called us to do, to bring refreshing, to bring, to bring life. He's called us to be trees in, in desert places that we can find water and, and bring fruit and, 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 and for the nations and not, not for ourselves. Um, it says they go from strength to strength as each appears before God in Zion. And who knows that God doesn't want to take us from strength to weakness. He wants to take us from strength to strength. And you might be sitting there and saying, well, you know, it feels like I'm going from strength to weakness, but maybe in God's economy, you're going from strength to strength because God's just doing something in your life. He's building faith in your life for where He's going to take you. And so we mustn't evaluate everything from the point of view of the world. And sometimes, yeah, Paul says, you know, even though I'm wasting away on the outside, but on the inside, I'm being, I'm being made strong. And um, our strength is not in ourselves and our legs, but it's our strength that actually comes when we start leaning on Jesus and trusting Him for our, our everything. Um, but the thing is, we've, we've all got a role to play. I was lying in, uh, I was stayed with my brother in Johannesburg, and one morning I was just praying, lying in the bed, and just little, he had a little, well, I think it was a painting, but of the Victoria Falls. And it just kind of spoke to me. And just like you see the Victoria Falls, you see this uh, huge amount of water just kind of going over the precipice and then this mist arising. And as I was lying there, I was you know, kind of thinking, you know, just the grace of God, just that the God is our source. And we can never get to the end of that source. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. And just as that water like in the, the Victoria Falls goes over there and lands on the rocks below and this mist comes up. And whoever has been to Victoria Falls, you'll see right around it is, it's all green. And um, but the first thing it just spoke to me about is, man, guys, we need to, you know, we want the more. The more, the more is Jesus. You know, we mustn't look anywhere else. We've got to look at Christ. He's our source. And uh, we've got to come back to Jesus. And, yeah, Paul, I thought this morning was awesome. Just, you know, just keeping our worship that we, we focus on Him. And His grace just keeps, it just keeps coming and coming. Um, megalitre upon megalitre. Um, but to me, the, the picture there is of that water going over. It's almost like uh, Christ was broken for us and he brought, he brought refreshing and life. He brought life to us. But I also felt that God wants us to be in a similar way. He wants us to be broken. He wants us to allow ourselves to go, to go over that precipice and to be broken. That when we walk in the streets, we see the brokenness of people. We see the, 
the, the depths of this despair of, of the people that have gone down. But God has called each one of us here um, in, by His grace to bring grace to, to other people. And the picture that I got was, uh, and then I suppose in relation to the Victoria Falls, it's a little bit um, simple, but it was... But I think that's how it's meant to be. It's actually um, the magnificence is in Christ. But we, we're just the instrument. But it's like an um, irrigation system and a bit of pop-ups. And as we plugged in and we, you know, the water flows through and we, we just pop up. And God wants to use us as pop-up sprinklers. He's placed us exactly in the position that He wants us to. And wherever you are in the business place, you're tapping into God and the sprinkler pops up, not, not by your strength, but by the grace that pushes you up and you, and you start watering. And you bring life into, into the situation. Um, if we look at Jesus, he was moved by compassion. And I was just asking, you know, do things still move us? I was just thinking, you know, kind of when, when you're young and, you know, someone used to ask about something, you blush and you go all red. You know, I, I, I can't remember when last I blushed. I don't know if I can blush. <laughs> Lost the ability. I don't know if the blood goes up high enough anymore, but I mean. <laughs> but there's something of an innocence when people, you know, just something of an inno- innocence, like of, you know, people blush. You know, sometimes we lose that, you know, kind of. Have we lost the ability to cry? Um, or just feel the plight of others? Or, or just the ability to get excited? Get, get excited about God? I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed just being up at um, the, the equip time and Wayne next to me. I mean, this <laughs> it's like a wound up top way, but I mean, <laughs> bells and whistles. And, but he's excited. And uh, man, it's, it's, it's awesome. But we, we can never lose our, our excitement of. Um, you know, sometimes we, as Christians, we become blunted and stunted and runted. And, you know, and but God just wants to use us as um, and like an irrigation system. So I was, I was looking at on this pilgrim journey um, things that that can hijack us, and I I thought let's look at Jesus and look at him. Um, I think he's a uh, to look at anything else in Jesus is to look at something that's lesser. Uh, Philippians 2 tells us that he's been given the name above, above all names. And I believe that for part of our inheritance, one day we will get a name. We will have a name, a name of honor in, in heaven. I don't know what else comes with it, but um, uh, clearly Jesus has been given a name above all names. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that, he is, that Jesus Christ is. Is, is Lord. So I want, to, I want to make Him my standard. I want to look at people around the world and say, well, you know, I want to be like them. Um, no, I want to be, I want to be like Jesus. Um, he came, He was a servant, He was humble, He was obedient, but not only obedient, He was obedient to the point of death, but not only to the point of death, death on a cross. And uh, just the, one of the most humiliating deaths Invented by barbarians, it would take you four days to die. Um, but that's our Jesus. He went and he suffered a death like that to bring life into into the world and fulfill his purpose. And because of that, and him humbling himself today, he's been given the name above all names. And so we need to look at just some of the things in, in Jesus' life. If we want to um, have more of an inheritance... We need to kind of do the things that he, he did. Cool. So we see he's born a baby. I was just looking at um, Kira and Connor. It's just <laughs> too many. They all start to see. But, yeah, just, uh, you know, ba- babies are... Babies occupy a lot of your time. Um, and I've already seen Viv as well. But maybe that's why you think. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, Jesus was born a baby, didn't come into the world seven or eight years old. Uh, imagine, imagine a baby coming in at seven or eight years old, uh, all full of wisdom. And, but, so Jesus was born a baby at the age of 12. He's found in his father's house. At the age of uh, 30, he goes into public ministry. And he's already got the, the cross in sight. He knows what his purpose is and, and uh, where, where he's headed. If you go and look in 1, 1 Peter 2, um, you find a similar parallel. It says there, um, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. Um, like living stones, you're being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And then we thirdly are called a, a chosen race and a, um, a holy nation. And, but in, in that whole thing, there's, there's a progression. Uh, we, need to, we need to progress from being a baby to like the teenage, the, the, the formative years to adulthood and taking our place in the, in the public um, the public eye, if you can call it, call it like that. So, uh, I think we find that many people and many people in the church just remain babies. We always want to come to church and, you know, come feed me. What's in it for me? Um, you know, burp me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and uh, we kind of, we almost like, we, we're helpless. But I don't think that's a place that, we, we, we're born into that, but it's not the place that we need to stay. We need to, we need to grow up into the good works that God has prepared for each one of us. Each one of us sitting here, God, you, you're God's workmanship, and God has prepared good works for you. I can't do your works, you can't do my works. We, but together we can do our work. And together, as each one does its work, the body builds itself up and comes to a place of, of maturity. So there's something of an individuality, but there's also something of a, a corporateness. So if, if, if you don't grow up, I can't grow up. So that's just the way it is. We kind of stay, you know, we, we won't rise up into the fullness of what God has called us to. I can walk in a measure of my inheritance on my own, but I can't walk in the fullness of my inheritance because my inheritance is linked to you. And so there's a responsibility on each one of us to say, well, God, what have you created me for? What's the grace of my life? And that I can get on with that thing um, because there's more than me at stake. We, we, we live in inter, interdependent lives. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing is that we need to grow up in the good works that God has prepared us. Work out, by the scripture says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We need to work this thing out. You know, we, grace comes into our life and Paul says, you know, don't receive the grace of God in vain. God has done everything, has poured all this stuff into our lives and, and if we just sit on it, let's actually receive it in vain. And Paul says, no, no, I do more than everyone, anyone else, because of, not because of I, but because of the grace that God has given me. And that needs to be our, our starting point. Um, I was just reflecting on the, the story of, of Esther. I remember Esther, um, she was, um, she found favor with uh, the king and could go into the chambers and um, then she, uh, her uncle Mordecai heard about a plot that a guy, Haman, was out to destroy the Jews, and um, because she had the special place with the king, he kind of approached her eventually and said, look, you know, God, God has put you here, and you know, what are you going to do about it? There's, you know, there's, a, there's a nation at stake, you know, and if, if you don't do anything, and he goes up to her and says, uh, in Esther 4, 3, he says, do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. 
if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise. You know, God, God's not going to be held ransom by any, any man. None of us is going to hold God ransom. God's got His purposes. God's got His plans. And it's good to remind ourselves, yes, we, we're central to God's purposes, but yet we're peripheral. I am, but I'm not. He needs me, but He doesn't need me. I'm handpicked, we handpicked, but He doesn't need us. And God's got His purposes, and um, God is a God of salvation. And if Queen Esther wasn't going to stand up and say, look, I, 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 will, I will stand up, and for what you've called me for, for this time, that purpose, um, I'm going to go before the king. And she actually says later on, well, you know, if I perish, I perish. Um, but I'm going to do it. And that needs to be our attitude. If, we, if we're going to rise up into the, the all and the more that God has got for us and for this town of ours, we're going to have to stand up and say, I will do it. If I perish, I perish. Um, and the reality is that if we're not going to do it, well, God's going to say, well, okay, I'll find someone else. And, um, okay, so it's quite a sobering thing. And, you know, it's, <clears throat> I'm sure most of us have had a, we've had a word or something, and we sit here, and we kind of, God's really speaking to us, and He says, oh, go and give the word, and we're kind of a little bit nervous. <clears throat> and then someone else pops up. And you think, ah, oh, damn it, I, sh- I should have gone up. And well, you come up afterwards, and you've lost the moment. And I, I think that's something of the thing. That we, we need to be a people that, God speaks, we move. Um, okay. Doing well. So that's, um, where were we? Ah, so he's born a baby at age, at age 12. So we get a kind of little picture of Jesus at age 12. We can turn to Luke. Uh, Luke 2. He'd gone with his parents to the feast of the Passover, 12 years old. Um, the, when, the pass, when the Passover, the feast had finished, his parents were on the way home, and they suddenly realized, oh, you know, where's, where's our son? And they couldn't find him. And they went back, and they searched all, the, all, over, the, all over the city, and after three days, they, they found him, and they found him in, in the temple. And we read there, it says, They found him in the temple, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Because, behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I had been in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her, in her heart. <clears throat> so we see with Jesus, even at the age of uh, 12, he starts addressing God as, as my, my father. And there was just some inner compulsion that kind of, inside of him, it kind of, told him that he had to be busy with his, his father's business. And so the question we need to ask is, what business are we, are we occupied with? You know, is it with uh, the business of my father, my heavenly father? Uh, Jesus knew that he had a, a mission to perform, and God has sent him into the world for a purpose to, to fulfill. And his eyes were ever on the father. He says, uh, I need to do what I, what I see my father doing. And so he was, he was on about the father's, the father's business. And we need to ask ourselves that question. Um, you know, am I on about my, my, my dad's business? Or is it my, my business and my, my little thing? Um, and we need to understand what, what God's business is and what God's, God's heart is and his, and his will. God's heart, as I said, is it's apostolic. Uh, God's heart is people. 
and people coming into the kingdom, being established in the kingdom. Read in Haggai, um, we won't go there now, but the nation were, were looking after their own houses, and they were living in paneled houses, and he sends the prophet Haggai and to, to address the nation. He says, consider your ways. You know, see, my house lies in ruins, but you, know, you guys are you're paneling your houses, and um, et cetera, et cetera, and kind of calls them to attention and arrests their hearts, and they, they hear what God is saying. Um, God stirs up, and God says, look, I'm, I'm in your midst. It stirs up the spirit of Zerubbabel, and the people start, start building. And God says, you know, what, just have a look. How does, how does this look compared to the former glory of my house? And they said, oh, it's not, not too cool. And God says, don't, don't worry, just keep building. Uh, my, my spirit is in the midst of you. And he goes on and says that uh, encouraging part of the scripture passage. Uh, my spirit remains in the midst of you. Fear, fear not, for thus says the Lord of hosts, yes, once more in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the, and the sea and the dry land. And I'll shake all nations so that the treasures of all nations will come in. And I'll fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. I think that the story there is we, we must just keep building and keep, keep on about our Father's business. And God says that He's led our house will be more than the, the, than, the, than the glory of the former house. Um, just keep the focus. Keep um, on about our dad's, our dad's business. And we're going to see uh, God's glory poured out in this, in this building. We're going to see the more of God. We're going to see, um, see the glory of God. We're going to see people healed. We're going to... Um, um, speaks there of... of the, the treasures of a nation, of the, the, the gold and the silver, and, but we need to just be on about our, our dad's business. <clears throat> in Luke, uh, Luke 2, it says, After three days they found him sit in the temple, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And I thought, wow. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And... That just speaks about being a people that, I love that picture of sitting amongst the teachers. Um, we need to be a people that we, we, we're hungry for the more of God. We want the more of God, we've got to, we've got to be hungry for the more of God. Um, we've got to avail ourselves, we've got to avail ourselves of, of every opportunity. We've got, uh, Alan stood up and said about uh, Cape Connect coming up in the 27th to the 29th of June. Guys, if we, if we want to move into that more, uh, I'd strongly encourage you. Let's, let's get there. Uh, do everything in your, just get, get to where God is working and what God is doing in our, in our midst. Um, and just by doing that, I can tell you it speeds up everything that uh, God is doing. Yeah. Uh, Proverbs 2 says, that we need to have a, a desire to learn, making our ears attentive to wisdom, inclining our hearts to understanding, calling out for insight, um, searching for hidden treasures. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and, and equity and every good path. Um, we need to have an appetite for... Man, you go up into Africa and... And I come back, I mean, look, they, they're a bit over the top. They, they meet seven days a week, three times a day. And, I mean, if they could, they, 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 they'd sleep there as well. And, but they, they, they're hungry. And I, sometimes I come back here and I think, man, you know, we, you know, I just don't find the same hunger. But I want to say, look, God, just put a, put a hunger in us. Put a hunger for, for the Word, that we're reading the Word, that we... Um, we're availing ourselves when, when we have people come in that God has gifted people um, to come and equip, that, that we come and sit and we sit around and we ask questions, we're interactive, uh, we gain understanding. 
I just love that. You know, it's kind of, um, it's not just sitting there, but we, you know, we're trying to test our understanding. It's, hey, we, yes, we, we're on the same page. Um, I think with, with Jesus there as well, he developed his, his listening and questioning skills. Man, we need to be a people that knows how to hear, hear God, um, inquiring from God, hearing what the Spirit's saying, hearing the cry of our city, asking the right questions, listening to what questions Nisan is asking. You just think about parenting, 101 and parenting, is listening and asking questions. You want to get a good relationship with your children? Stop tuning them. Start asking a question and testing their understanding. And you might be surprised what they know. And you might suddenly find that they start coming towards you. There are too many parents that we, we kind of sit on the throne and we, um, and we wonder why our kids go off into, into rebellion. I think to you, just the younger guys, you, you guys have got a voice. Just speak up. I know you guys do. Um, we want a year. And sometimes I think we'll be more surprised what comes out of these guys than <laughs> us older guys. But we need to develop our, our listening and our, our hearing skills. Um, <clears throat> yeah. The time of eleven. Yeah. Let's stop there. I think just the last thing, maybe just on that, is you see that Jesus was submissive. He submitted to his parents, he submitted to being baptized by John the Baptist. Uh, he submitted to the leading of the Spirit, and he submitted to the Father's will to die on a cross. And I believe that if we want the more of God we've got to be submitted to one another. It's not about my thing, your thing, but it's about God's thing. Christ is the head. We submitted to the head. We submitted to the leaders of the church. Wives submitted to husbands. Children, children obeying parents. Masters obeying. Servants obeying masters. <laughs> um, but, but one another. Um, and I believe if we find ourselves in a place like that, um, it's a place where God brings order and God can bring fruitfulness and multiplication. As soon as we, there's, there's a time of if we're not submitted and we're on about our own thing, um, often a thing, selfish ambition comes in there, there's jealousy, uh, it's not a thing of love, and disorder comes in there and there can be no fruitfulness. And so we've got to be a people that uh, submits one, one to another. Um, and then we run with what God has called us. Let's pray. God, if we can, let's, let's just stand. This morning we we lift up our eyes, Lord, and we want to see you, Jesus. Lord, you the author and perfecter of our faith, Lord, you Lord didn't just speak about things, but Lord that you came and demonstrated your, your very love, Lord. You you walked amongst us. Um, you demonstrated grace. Um, and Father, we want to be a people, Lord, that as we look to you, Lord, and allow your word and your spirit to fashion us, Lord, um, that, that we might be, Lord, transformed to look more like you, Lord. That our hearts, Lord, might be moved, arrested uh, towards your kingdom, Lord, and to the things that you're calling us as a church. 
I thank you for each person sitting here, Lord. I thank you for the grace in our lives. Um, I thank you, Lord, that you've, you've placed us, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you're our source. And that, Lord, as we look to you, Lord, even now, Lord, um, Father, the things that you're calling us to, Lord, that we know, Lord, that uh, your, your river never runs dry, Lord. Uh, your grace keeps coming. Your mercies are new every morning. And Father, we know, Lord, that times that we've, we've messed up, Lord, we've, but Father, you, you don't hold us on parole uh, and on our good behavior, Lord, but Father, we know as we stand here, Lord, this morning, Lord, we, we've been pardoned. We've been set free, Lord, that we've, um, that you've seated us, Lord, in, in heavenly places. May we your workmanship, Lord. And Father, I pray, Father, that um, your spirit would rest on us, Lord, and this great salvation that you've brought us into, Lord, that we'd work it out. That, Father, that um, this church, Lord, would grow up into the fullness, Lord, and that you've called us, Lord. That, Father, that, um, yeah, Father, we, not that we had, don't have the cry of babies, Lord. We always want the cry of babies, Lord, and, and, and new children, Lord, and, and new births. But, Father, may we never, Lord, remain in that place. Uh, may we never, Lord, look with disdain, Lord, on, on this great salvation. But may we take hold of life with both hands that we might pull others, Lord, in, um, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the glorious inheritance that we, we have, Lord, with one another, um, in Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yeah, Father, and I, I just pray, let's, let's just pray for, you know, just as we're standing here, let's, let's just, these empty seats. I mean, I, just, I don't want to pray for empty seats, but I mean, yeah, just that God... Just that, Lord, that we, we come, Lord, and Father, we, we're just praying for the more of you and, and all of that, Lord. But Father, we want to pray for, for fresh salvations, Lord. Father, that the train of your robe, Lord, would fill this, this place, Lord God. That Father, that, Father, that we'd see many more people being saved, Lord God. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Just spread your robe, Lord. Father, yeah, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. And uh, just that, Lord, that you were broken and you brought life to us. And may we do the same, Jesus. Yeah, amen. Uh, okay. Yeah, just... Uh, just on the announcements in, not, not next week, but the next week, we're going to, Bob's just going to take about five minutes. We're going to talk about kids' ministry, what's going down in kids' ministry, and um, just get, yeah, a little bit of that dynamic going. And, um, yeah, and I think part of, part of our inheritance are, are our children. So if you've got kids, let's, let's try and be there on that Sunday.